have a story which is not related to the topic. I just want to talk about something uh, which I thought is related. There's a professor who told me about this story, okay? He said, on one of the days, he reached uh, one of the airports in US, okay? There, he was standing with his luggage, an Indian professor with his luggage, right? On a, you know, after a long flight, he was there with the luggage, and a taxi driver came in and said, I'll pick your bag, put it in, and I'll drop you wherever you want to go. And after such a long flight, you're so lazy, okay, where it comes first? Okay, take me in. That's how typically people do. It was a one hour long drive. And in that drive, that duration, the driver and the professor started talking about different aspects. What the, does the driver do in life? What are things that, that are up to, he's up to? And why is he driving? So he started uh, sharing his story, the driver, that actually he came to US not to drive, but he has a big business idea in his mind. And uh, when he said that, from the driver's seat, he picked up, you know, he pulled the dashboard and pulled out a report, threw on the back of the car. Hey, professor, see this. And the professor, sitting there, just picked it up in one hour long drive. I think he just glanced through it, what it is. He glanced through that document and said, hmm, you have a good business idea, but I think you need to work on this bit a little more, do a little more research. And I would suggest for this aspect, why don't you contact this person? I know this person can give you a contact. And once your business idea is solid, maybe then you can go and invest. That was his advice. And then after a while he asked, you have such a great idea. Why are you driving? Why are you wasting your time? The driver answered, Professor, if I would come to your office and take an appointment of one hour, how much would you charge me? Professor thought maybe maybe two dollars, and he was not getting an appointment immediately. It will take you at least two weeks. There is a waiting time there. But now, as a driver, I got your advice. Take of course. In fact, you are paying me for doing that. So actually, for that driver, it was an opportunity. It was an opportunity that he could pick and choose. At the airport, okay, today I want this person's advice. I think this person is smart. He can tell me something about my business idea. And through the strategy, he was getting time of people who would never meet him otherwise. Now try to relate this thing with Toastmasters. When you're part of this club, you are meeting so many people who otherwise might not meet you. If they may, they might not give you feedback. They would not be their evaluation. They would not have time to tell you what you're good at, what you're bad at. And moving beyond the club, so this is this, this set of people, okay? Moving beyond club, what about other people? How many times you get to meet, say, a director at some other organization and sitting right next to you doing some layman things, you know, maybe creating certificates, signing them. <laughs> and I have experienced this, you know? If you just look at the task that what am I doing at one of the meetings of Toastmasters, some of the training programs, creating certificates, is that something interesting? We're just filling out hundreds of certificates, putting names of people who are eligible to get certificates. But by doing so, what did I do actually? Was I only doing certificates? Not really. I was actually chatting with one of the heads of another organization and he was sharing his perspective in his life, he was sharing his perspective on Toastmasters, his perspective of how he deals with his team when he's managing back at his office. He was sharing how he does evaluations for people. And we were talking about a lot of things. And when we connect, we become friends, we interact, even for work-related things or personal things. When we develop relationships, we develop you know, bonds, we, we get advisors, we get mentors from across. So that's the why of the whole thing. And now we can get to very, very specifics, moving to the next slide. Now how you can do it. So the why is done, how you can do it. First of all, beyond the club, the first entry point is the contest. When you become a contestant, the first level contest happens at the club level. 
once you win at the club level, the next level is the area level where you meet another set of winners from other clubs within this area. And then the next level is division level. If you win the area level, you reach division level where you meet winners from other areas. And if you win at division level, you reach the district level, which is almost the all India level, where you meet winners from all different divisions. And for some contests, like the one which is happening in September, district is the last limit. But for the international speech contest, which happens once in a year, the finals or the semi-finals and the finals happen at US. So there you meet winners from all across the globe. So that's, that's the first way of going beyond club within Toastmasters. The second way is being the MC of the events. Now, if you're not interested in being a contestant, you can be the host of the event. You can be the host, the, the anchor of the event, similar to what a Toastmaster of the day is in the club meeting. You can be a host of the event for the contest, for a seminar, anything that is happening on behalf of the area or division or district. Okay, next opportunity is judges. Now, when there is a contest, there is a way, there is a methodology by which winners are selected. By being a judge, it's, it's a, again a different kind of skill set. You know how to improve your evaluation. What is good and what is bad with respect to the set parameter. It's not based on hunch that, okay, I like this person though. This is the winner for me and I don't like this person's face, so I don't consider that person as winner. It's not like that. There is a set parameter. There is a way how judgment happens in Toastmasters. And this is a skill set that how do you judge and find out who you think is the winner and also trying to match is your judgment at par with majority of other judges. Although this is a confidential role, but once you do some bits, bits of judgments, you can also be a chief judge, which is... Uh, the sphere leader for all the judges and that person is a known person so you, you gain a lot of respect within Toastmasters community if you are a chief judge who can be trusted upon for fair judgment. So that's another opportunity. And there are other roles like the counters, again a very critical role. When uh, the judgment happens, not, it's not one judge that's there in the audience, there are multiple judges. So somebody has to consolidate the judgment reports and come up with a count of what is the consolidated result. So the counter is the person who collects the judgment violets, compiles them and hands it over to the chief judge. Then the timers. The way we have timer in a club meeting, similarly we have timers in every other meeting. Okay, whether it is a contest, whether it is a seminar. So timer actually helps you do better time management. And that's a critical skill set. And Sergeant at Arms. Sergeant at Arms is, uh, I would say, one of the most important roles. Now, whether, uh, I mean, I would consider it number one role, in my opinion. Whether the meeting room is available or not, whether we are able to connect through the PC or not, whether the camera is charged or not, whether anything is available at the right time or not. Organize them, organizing everything the right way at the right time is the role of the Sergeant at Arms. And trust me, if you are a good sergeant at arms, you can do any kind of wacky task which you are assigned at work or when you have to organize stuff. That's the most difficult of the thing, being prepared for the unexpected. And not to underestimate audience. Being a good audience is also important. Why? Because when you are a good audience, when you are listening to the person who is standing here speaking, that actually helps the speaker. If you are you know, playing some music back there as an audience, you're not a good audience. Okay? If you're not smiling when, you're, when the speaker is looking at you, you're not a good audience. Yeah? So being a good audience, and also if somebody is trying to crack a joke, you didn't like it, and what kind of expression you give it, actually helps or breaks the speaker. So being a good audience is also very important because here it's, it's an environment uh, to support each other together. It's not nobody is a teacher over here. Nobody is going to tell you what the best thing is. It's like we learn from each other. 
So being a, being a good audience, if you don't want to get into anything else, go there, just explore different clubs, go to different seminars, attend the meetings. That's how you understand perspective from different people. And then apart from the contest, we have leadership opportunities. So within the club, we do have the EC committee. We have the president, the vice president, and so on and so forth. These are the people who are running the club. But you also have opportunities beyond the club in terms of leadership. Like I said, we have area, then we have division, district, and then board of directors. So board of directors is across all geos. You can volunteer to be director of an area, the person who is managing multiple clubs, helping different uh -huh. clubs meet their objectives. You can be a division leader, helping various areas. And when you do so, now why, why to do that? How is it different from leadership opportunities within an organization? How? One critical difference that I noticed is that when you're in Toastmasters, nobody, nobody is answerable to you. It's not a formal structure. Nobody is your boss. Okay? It's different from a management in an organization where you're paid to do work. When you're paid to do work, you have a role, you're answerable to your boss. But this is not management. This is leadership. Leadership is all about how do you get work done? How do you influence others without having that authority of title? Without having that authority that I can sack you. How can you do that? And people do it. And why is it that somebody is a better influencer than the other person? What makes one division director stand out from another division director? Why is it that when uh, our ex-president uh, uh, of Adobe Club, Neera Jhukta, who served as a district director, when he makes one phone call that I want you to be there, people turn up. Keeping aside all their personal obligations, if there is a professional commitment in trying to manage that. If, if it is one call that I need you there for this event, people go there. The reason is simple, because they are better leaders. Now that's, that's the thing to learn. That how can you be a better leader in terms of being able to get work done from people who do not report to you, who maybe did not even know you before, who maybe are not even in your organization, Maybe they are not in the same city, they are working from some other city, some other country. Still, they are believing you, they have a faith on you, they trust your evaluation, they seek guidance from you. And if you become that kind of leader, you have actually benefited from those masters. So this is the scope of activities that we have in hand. And if we move on to next points, we talked about areas, we talked about divisions, district, and board of directors. So these are different levels of leadership you, got, you can rise up to, and it's all volunteer sort of roles and responsibility. It's not that somebody will promote you there, it's your voluntary action. And then you participate in conferences and seminars. That's another set of opportunities. Uh, seminars are more focused on uh, specific aspects. There, there could be seminars on how to be better evaluators, seminars on how to be better speakers, there can be seminars on how to be more humorous while delivering speeches. So you can go and attend those, be in speech contests, and you can be a comrade. And yeah. So finally, I would like to say that don't think of Toastmasters as, as just this set of people. There are a lot of other opportunities right there. It's all about what you choose to do. So a ship is safe at the shore. But that's not the purpose of the ship. Do you have the metal to seek the ocean or not? It's totally your choice. Whether you participate in a club meeting or not, it's your choice. Whether you move up to beyond the club or not, it's your choice. You make a choice and move ahead. And it's your choice. You want to be a driver or join Toastmasters. Thank you. Over to the